All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, today I'm going to talk about and show you what we mean by kinetic molecular theory of gases. So I have this uh, simulation we're w working on uh, today. And you notice on the left here, we have hydrogen gas in a volume and with temperature at 300 Kelvin. So we're going to use the Kelvin uh, temperature scale because it doesn't have a negative. And what we see is that uh, slow down, the lower the temperature, the molecules are slowing down. Incre increase the speeding up. And you notice on the graph to the left, to the right, over here, we have what we call a histogram. Basically, how many particles, or the probability of finding uh, a particle going at this speed. And as we adjust the temperature, the histogram shifts from the left to the right. All right, and then we can change to helium, and then to nitrogen, and we got all these, whoops, let me scroll this down a bit, there we go. Nitrogen, speed this up, you notice that the curve changes a little bit. Let's go ahead and go, there we go. So let's go ahead and start with hydrogen. Now I'm going to show you that hydrogen. And so hydrogen, H2, hydrogen gas, two, if you see two atomic, two atoms of hydrogen bound together, uh, atomic mass, uh, molecular mass is going to be two gram is. 2.02 uh, Daltons or AMUs since we're just looking at one molecule. And let's see what happens when we increase the temperature. So I'm going to come back to this. There we go. Bring this back over to fit. Uh, come on, 50 Kelvin. This is going to be very, very slow. And we're going to show you the most probable velocity, and that is showing at 462 uh, meters per second. So at, at 50 Kelvin, uh, the mean velocity is going to be in uh, 642. So, let me come back over here. Now I'm gonna, we're gonna expand this a little bit. Notice that it's not an even split. It's, this is not exactly what we call a normal curve. It actually tails a bit more at this end, at the higher velocities than the, than the lower velocities. Now, if we take a look at the mean velocity, the average, That's a little bit about 725 meters per second squared. So this is you know, a little bit higher than this. And if we take the root mean squared velocity, it's even higher. Now this is the reason we got three different means, or right, averages that we're talking about, is that this is very unique. So when we talk about the most probable velocity, most probable is based on statistics. This is where the velocity or the magnitude of the velocity, I'm going to say magnitude of the velocity that most atoms have or most molecules have. So most of the uh, molecules of H2 have a velocity of 642 meters per second. It's not all, but that's the that's the the most. The average, the mean, is a little bit high. It's a little bit skewed because we've got more atoms to the right of the of this than over here. So we're going to, it's going to be skewed to the right a little bit, and that's 
come we have this 725. The root mean square is that we sum the velocity, square the velocity, sum them all, then divide by the number that we have, and then take the square root. This is the, what we call root mean square, and that is that number 787 meters per second. Now let's go ahead and increase the temperature, and you notice a couple things happening. The, the speed shifts to the right. So as we go up towards, say, 500 Kelvin, everything's shifting to the right, and now our hydrogen velocity has increased to 231 meters per second. That's fairly fast. The mean is a little higher, 292, and then the square root, root mean square velocity is to basically 2,500 meters per second. That is almost four, to, four times, three times as fast as it is here, based on the temperature of hydrogen. And again, let's focus on this a little bit. Whoops, come on down. Most of the curve, half the curve is, we got more faster speeds to the right than we do to the left. As you see, only, we have, may have a few zeros. He knows over here is going faster. So let me get this back. We have now our three speeds at 500. Let's, let's find this when we change to helium. Mass gets a bit higher. And it slows down a bit. So mass does have an effect on the speed. So 231 meters per second. We go to helium, which is heavier, and it's 114. We see a definite decrease. Now here's the thing. The energy associated with these molecules remain the same. So the energy, the total kinetic energy of 500 Kelvin for helium is the same as it is in hydrogen. The difference between the speeds is due to the mass. So when we talk about this, and let me erase this. So So we look at this, that the kinetic energy, which is equal to one-half mass times velocity squared, the, the kinetic energy is related to the mass and the velocity. Now if we look at this for hydrogen, it's one-half mass times Twenty thirty one meters per second squared, and that's going to give us the kinetic energy. Let's say the mass is two. So if we look at the kinetic energy of helium, that's going to be four, and we're going to let's switch this to helium. Now that's one forty four fourteen forty two. Now these things should be relatively close. 0.5 times 2 times 2031 squared. And we're going to get a number that's going to be fairly huge. It's going to be 4,124,961 joules. Then we do 1442 squared times 4 times 0.5. And we're going to get 1,158,728 1, joules. And honestly, they're fairly close. If I actually did the actual mass of these things, they'll actually get closer. So the kinetic energy of helium at 500 degrees is equal to the kinetic energy of hydrogen at 500 degrees. 
if we actually take uh, specific measurements. And guess what? That means is that the temperature is directly related to kinetic energy of the, of the, of the gas molecules. That is important because now we have a direct relationship between kinetic energy and temperature, and we can relate this to even solids and liquids. Just by, if we take the temperature, we're measuring how things of a solid, we're measuring how things vibrate, the same thing with a liquid. Now with a gas, you know, some of the molecules, so if we look at, come over here, looking at uh, carbon dioxide, let's go ahead, these things should be vibrating in, as well. They can also do a lot of collisions. And when we have these collisions, energy is transferring from one atom to the other, and that means that one atom gets speed up a little bit, one atom will slow down. See, we're looking at these. So this is what happens when we have molecules, and this energy transfer, it means it's elastic, means that uh, momentum is conserved, and so is energy being conserved. There's no loss of energy due to the collisions, just transfer. And there's water vapor. Again, you notice that things move around, shift, some are slow, some go faster. Energy is transferred, meaning uh, one atom speeds up and then they slow down. And so this is how, this is how at gases work. Uh, and this is what our current theory is, or current hypothesis. Now, remember, connect molecular theory, gas, and we'll have another video that explains this in a little bit more detail. So the takeaway on this video is that temperature is related to kinetic energy. And it's proportional to kinetic energy. And as we speed up the temperature, you notice that the, the meet, root mean square, uh, so somebody velocity is going to the right, and then the velocity is going to the left. They all kind of cancel out if we take the average. But um, if we square it and then take the, uh, and then divide it by a number, then take the square root of that, we're actually going to get the root mean square velocity. And this is actually more of a better value than the most probable velocity or the mean velocity. Uh, hopefully you understand this lecture, understand the, the simulation. And if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you.